and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and today in the arena, we are shooting for Mythic. Yeah, uh, we're on Diamond 1, and I am curious who is going to bring me Mythic Glory this season. I've lined up some of my favorite decks. Some of them I've done videos on already, some of them I haven't. Some I probably don't need to do a video on, like Mono Blue. So here's 10, 15 deck. No, yes, hold on, 6. And 6 is 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Jeez, it's a lot of decks. But uh, the plan is this, we'll play one until it loses, and then we'll play the next one. I have no idea how long this will take. And if something wins like two or three games in a row, we'll keep playing it. And I don't know, this might be a multi-part series. I'm curious to see if you guys enjoy it or you like watching it. The first one we're going to start with is Nissa Steel Yo Girl. So. This is a blue-green ramp deck, tries to steal all the opponent's things with Entrancing Melody and Mass Manipulation. We also have some fun ofs like Thrashing Brontodon and Frilled Mystic. The biggest change I've made to the deck is concessions to the mono-red meta that is best of one that I enjoy playing. And that is three, four Thorn Lieutenants and four Ripjaw Raptors to try to keep us alive long enough to do Nissa shenanigans. They're not terrible in other matchups either. They're just not very good against Esper. They're just threats they have to deal with, and hopefully if they use up their things to deal with threats, Nyssa or Hydroid Crassus can take over the game. All right, let's dive in. Hey guys, let's take a quick break to talk about Flipside Gaming's core 2020 booster box giveaway. From now until July 15th, you can win an entire box of M20 for free if you follow these steps. Number one. Find $10 or more worth of stuff at FlipSideGaming.com that you like. Easy. They have singles, they have sealed product, and they have all the gaming supplies you need. So, number two, use the promo code CGB before checkout. This saves you 10% and it supports the channel at the same time. Number three, complete your order. That's it. Even a mono red player can figure it out. Please check out the links in the description to read the giveaways, rules, and conditions. And thank you for supporting the channel. May the best mage win. Ramp creatures and a thorn lieutenant. No payoffs and a ton of elves. This is the kind of hand that dies to Akaya's Wrath, and there are a lot of those in the meta right now. On the draw, too. I feel like I have to keep it. This is what our deck does. It is what it's here for. So we just hope that our opponent's not on Esper. Mono blue, that's pretty bad too. I don't see that going too well. But we'll just throw our cards on the table and see what happens. Who knows? Who knows? No curious obsession. Maybe we can play a game. Now, you have to watch out. The opponent will get you with that Merfolk Trickster. Let's see first if we can resolve a Paradise Druid. What do you guys think? Do we play around Trickster or do we go for it? It's unlikely that one point of damage is worth the risk, to be honest. And you can just see the hesitation here. That they still have something to play. So I think, I think going into it would be a bad move, although we don't see an end step Merfolk Trickster. So it could all be an elaborate bluffy scheme. Hey, a blue source. Sweet. Well, we could play counterspell games with our opponent. I think it's better to just splunk our elves. Just elf them. Elf them as hard as we can. Maybe the opponent will respond to this paradise druid with a counter? Nay. How about this incubation druid? There's so many things. Oh, this one gets a bit of a, a bit more hesitation, doesn't it? And there's a wizard's retort. So, definitely a card they may have been sitting on. We'll go ahead and play this. And we've got access to three times as much mana. Can we do something awesome with it? So, we're kind of at a point where we can just start attacking the opponent down and using our Frilled Mystic. We're in a really good spot, actually. Uh, let's, before combat, try for the Thorn Lieutenant, see if it gets countered. I guess I can play, if I pay life for this, is that a bad thing? Yeah, it might be. The life might be more relevant for the opponent than for me. I'm often too conservative with paying life, though. Let's go for the Thorn Lieutenant. Let's see what happens. 
So there's a number of ways, like, I'm thinking about if I have to pay for a quench with something like this, but we get the Wizard's Retort. I'm not going to try to Frilled Mystic my way through that. What I will do is send exactly you. Well, ah! What's the worst case? They tap out for Tempestion and we play a giant Hydroid Crassus? That's fine. Like, boom, take five. I like this. Siren Storm Tamer staying busy, but now the opponent's down on board, and we have another island. And now, I think we just start throwing, like, the Paradise Druids at the opponent. Let's see, one, two, three, four. We can still play a four power Crassus here if the opponent goes with a Trickster, and we just end up trading. So there we go. And since the opponent did nothing, we'll just keep passing, and now we have the Mystic up, which that might get him. Here's an end step opt for your pleasure. We don't want to play the Crassus. Yes, we still get the trigger and to draw the cards even if it gets countered, but the body is just as important in this matchup. It's a very important body. Okay. So a couple of opts. The opponent finds a land. Let's see what they do with it. Here's a Terramander. With counter magic up, I might add. The opponent has some mana here. I actually... Hmm. I think I just go for it. If the opponent has a third Wizard's Retort, then the Giant Crassus happens, and it can outsize even the Terramander. So let's see what the opponent has here. And it doesn't look like they can... I mean, they would have to have another Wizard's Retort. A Quench wouldn't be good enough, or an Essence. Um, is it Essence Extraction, the one that puts a counter on thing? No, that's a black spell. Essence Capture, that's it. They would have to have an Essence Capture too, which a lot of the best one lists don't play because it's a bit narrow. And the opponent's still leaving this mana up. We can play around a Spell Pierce with the Nissa who shakes the world, so I think we just go for it. Hey ya! What you got? Negate. Okay, they were sitting on Negate. Still, tap some low. Let's just smash their face. And with three life left, even the even the wizard lizard is lethal on its own. And it's time for the opponent to stop attacking. Let's see how they handle a Ripjaw Raptor coming down. We'll make them respond to these cards before we attack. There is a chance our opponent simply has a dive down here. If we attack with everybody, they can block, block, and they die. So they would have to have a Trickster, which they haven't had pretty much the whole game. And they should play it before combat if they do have it. Okay. Well, maybe they've just been that careful with their Trickster. So if we attack here, the opponent can eat this. Chump, chump. They don't even have to make that block. I think we'll just keep waiting. Waiting is fine. I can wait. I have, I mean, we'll make them solve this raptor. Five, six, seven. They need another land for this Terramander. They don't have it. Another Trickster, but that's going to result in a giant Crassus. So, no attacks. Six. Power up. And it has Trample. So the Terramander is going to have to be quite the scrapper. Terramander and Storm Tamer and such can gang up on it, but that takes blockers away from other places. And we're still at 18. We can afford to be patient and wear the opponent down. And they're just not going to have as many big things as we do. Here's a Tempest Shin. Ooh. And see? We got him to tap low. Then we take him for all they're worth. What do we want? Like, I don't think it matters necessarily what we take. So we take something, swing all out. One, two, three, block here. They have to block enough there. So yeah, we just take the thing with the most toughness and this is easy. <laughs> that jellyfish has trample. <laughs> it's pretty tough ombre. All right, one game in the bank. All right. Yeah, we're on the play. We've got a bunch of elf creatures. This is what the deck does. The opponent has the Jace Avatar. So 
in the spirit of screwing up your mind, they're mono red clearly. Never mind. I guess not everybody lies, just just me. Hmm. So always kind of tough to figure out what to lead on here. The Kai's Wrath decks are such a bad matchup if we don't draw like Nissa at the perfect time. Doesn't look like this will be a Kai's Wrath deck, just good old Grixis. It's good old Recu Grixis. If they take the Thorn Lieutenant, we have to watch out for Cry of the Canarium quite a bit. Mm hmm. So, with that in mind, we don't want to play both creatures. We'll summon the Incubation Druid because next turn we can pump it. It forces them to have the cry on time right here. And we'll punch him with the druid because who cares if it's hexproof it's go if it's going to get swept. Narset, okay. Do you now? You can steal that, right? You can kill it or steal it. I wonder what the right play would be. The Thought Erasure. So we steal it because... Quite honestly, the Thought Erasure is just going to get a Paradise Druid. Otherwise, we lose the Mass Manipulation anyway. So, give me that. I, should have, I shouldn't have done this, by the way. I should have saved it. Because now, yeah, that was a mistake. I should have just left the Narset on 3 and not searched for something, because now the Thought Erasure takes the Nissa. I guess it pays off if we draw another one, but... I think I could have left it. If the opponent bedevils it, then things aren't that different. We just play out our Paradise Druids and then their Thought Erasure is no good. So yeah, that was a mistake. Can't get into Mythic with mistakes like that, friends. I mean, I wore this headset. This, like, gamer headset. Because we were doing, like, try-hard stuff today. <laughs> How do I get away with this crap, team? All right. Um, hmm. Gotta tap the non forests so we can play this and this and then do this. We're just you're just smashing it all onto the board. The opponent's trying to set up some sweeper shenanigans. They're gonna ritual sit us, whatever, or make them have it. Go for it, dude. Kaboom. Nissa down. No. All right. Can I draw a third one? Is that asking too much? Guess it was. All right. So enter the attack step. All attack. Then adapt. Thank you, Vigilance. Hit him hard. The Mana Dork beatings. Can we get there? Can we get there? Or is Ritual of Soot up our opponent's sleeve this whole time? It was me the whole time. Oh, the suspense. They wouldn't take this long to play it if they had it, right? There's no way. There's no way. Who would slow roll in such an evil fashion? No one would. It's the cry. We we guessed it would be a cry, but that's too much damage. And Nissa off the top steals another one. Halfway. Knock, knock, knocking on Mythic's door. Our very first deck, and we can't lose. One like two in a row. You know how long it's been since I've done that in Diamond? <laughs> it's harder than you think, okay? <laughs> Magic's easy. Just never lose. You get Mythic so easy. Obviously, your boy CGB would never lose a game in Diamond. I lose a lot. My ELO's gotta be like... The absolute bottom of the barrel. I keep on trying to make really fun decks work, and I keep failing. 
And if, you know, if I fail, they become experiments I put on YouTube and do com some constructed events with and make a video about, and if they work, I keep playing them. And then eventually, usually about 15 to 20 days into season, we get to that mythic. Like clockwork. Esper. Nobody bringing red no more. Ripjaw's sad. Ripjaw wanted a bigger job. So obnoxious. Look at these cards people play with these days. D Spark. Well, that'll take care of a Ripjaw Raptor, won't it? Do we make the opponent have the answer right here so we can play the Nissa next turn? Probably. Let's make him use it. I mean, it's not good in the matchup per se because it doesn't get any value and just gets smashed by something. Oh. You monster. How could you? What? Look at you drawing all the lands. It's not right, man. It's not fair. All right. Can't even wizard lizard. Mana's not right. But we'll get under that D spark with a thorn lieutenant. Stupid Narset. Do you know that your neck is massive? Sorry, now I'm neck shaming Narset. I should, I should be embarrassed. Let's drop that off. Gaining control of this bell haunt isn't going to happen anytime soon. Oh, that hurts my soul. Yep. Blanks off the top. Oh yeah. Get it. Get in there. Do the work. I'd take Nissa. Like, mass manipulation isn't doing anything, and the Frilled Mystic's uncastable. Eh, thinking about it. Maybe thinking about the Surveil a lot. Hmm, should I put Teferi on the top of my deck? Let me go ask the Magic 8-Ball. Maybe there's a sideboard guide I can reference. Tell me if I should keep a Teferi on top of my deck. Okay. <laughs> I'm just messing, of course. Cast Down goes to the bin. Narset replaces herself. You know 88 ways to defeat me? You only need one. I, I'm pretty sure I could come up with uh, plenty from this spot, too. Don't know if that's special, Narset. Don't know if you're that special. All right. Come on, Crassus. Bring me glory. It doesn't matter. We still need something to like just put on the board to either draw out the Wrath or attack the Narset. But yeah, we don't get a card. Our life is sadness. Opponent, let me keep the Nissa. I think they want to blow up my land. Sounds about right. Hmm. Tough call. Do I keep Teferi? Yeah. You keep Teferi. That's how it works. All right. I'm just going to end this. There's no point. Dun dun dun. Nissa steal your girl, forgot to steal girls, and lost. Okay, next game is with the Demir control deck I put together. I decided to give it another go. I did lose a game, but I'm not even going to show it. I just deleted the file immediately. I mulliganed to five. I kept one land. I never drew another. It, it, it was, it's not good TV. It's not good entertainment. Now, this might not be either, because despite being a deck absolutely loaded with removal, I have none of it here. I have all card advantage cards. So this might also get ugly. Especially if there's a Steamkin that can get bigger than a Cry of the Carn Carnarium could save me from. Well, what's it gonna be? Pyromancer. Okay. I still hope we can go Thought Erasure into Cry and play a magic game. Let's see what we can do. Wow! How fun. Let's grab that Goblin Chain Whirler. We're not gonna be able to stop those light up the stages. I mean, this is the card that has to get me back in it, but... It's too slow? Let's see. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Our opponent would only have to draw 5 points of burn with these light up the stages, and God knows they can do that. We'll just have to find another one of these at some point. Man, being on the draw is sad. You thought we were going to play some magic. Wow, they played out their land first. Maybe they're inexperienced at lighting stages. Frenzy and Risk Factor. Now the opponent 
I would light again and try to hit the land so that I could just cast the Frenzy. It's the best card, but this game's already over, I'm afraid. Oh, they don't like the stage. They're playing it really careful. Let's see if we can find something with Op to slow this down. Like, our draw is just... Like, it is weird that I can't seem to remove anything. And then we finally find Cry the Canarium. Let's see if our opponent gets to play their Experimental Frenzy here. Down to eight. I can risk factor myself to, f to four. <laughs> That's probably what's about to happen. Yep. Not giving up those cards. Ooh, Ashiok could exile the graveyard if the opponent doesn't use the risk factor this turn. But I bet they do. Seems like drawing three is a pretty good deal. By the way, also three Shocklands in a two-color deck. I'm just... I'm just stunned. I'm just stunned by this game. All right, so I could get back and enter the God Eternals with the Bond, but without a target, you can't cast it. Let's get that Risk Factor exiled. Let's mill ourselves. We're trying to put something like maybe Moment of Craving in the yard, and we also want to flip this as Kanta ASAP, so that's why we target ourselves with the Ashiok. And here's the lethal burn spell. Any second. The stage is lit. It's not there. Unless the opponent's just slow rolling me. What a quality human being. Please tell RJD2 to die in a fire. Oh, wait. They're fireproof. They're red. Next deck is vampires. We've got Sky Marcher. We just have a ton of one drop vampires. This is White Weenie with a vampire twist. I did make a video about this one. You can go back and find it. Certainly among CGV's greatest hits. Nope, nope, nope. Cancel, 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 cancel. I forgot to change decks. What the heck? Cancel in 2019. All right, it actually worked, which I'm stunned by. All right, we has vampires. Vampires, it we has. We got Vicious Conquistador into an Adanto Vanguard. You will suffer. Into Legion Lieutenant, just pump them. Just the vampire dream. Maverin Fane, just poop out some tokens. Is that three Esper Mages in a row? Oh no, we died to a red deck. I forgot that game, it was too quick. We were dead before we knew it hit us. But that's a big reason that Vanguard is back to a four of in most of my aggressive white strategies, because Kai's Wrath is now the bee's frickin' knees in these um, Esper decks. So we gotta, we gotta run it. Okay. Name that vampire. Play this. So we could um, Maverin Fane and get things going that way. And I like Maverin Fane, but I think that Lieutenant and landing is way better here because we get to attack with both our creatures thanks to the legion pump. Soren's on deck. It's a lot of damage, brother. I mean, heroes, here's what they need. <laughs> Making some chump blockers. That can keep the vanguard at bay. Say their next turn is like Tyrant score and your lieutenant. Make a 1-1 one, one block here. They can get they can get back into gear. Okay, this is even better with Oath of Kaya. That's really good. That's the kind of curve I want to play when I play against aggressive decks. My control maginess, well well what can I say? We're bringing it today, my friends. Give me back that lieutenant. And swing him in. So the opponent would love to keep something around to attack this Sorin. I don't know if that will be reasonable, but they're going to take all this damage, and I think that their hope is that they can turn around and attack this Sorin off the battlefield. The question is, can they do that and stay alive? Let's see, if they kill the Legion Lieutenant, attack with the hero, and make two tokens, yeah. 
They stay pretty well alive. Okay, we're really racing thoughts, Maverin Fane. You don't get to stay, my friend. You're out of here. My vampire payoffs is gone. And for your next trick, my god, what a machine. What a killer. What an absolute house. All right. All those tokens are going to have to keep you alive. Oh, ho, ho. hello, baby. How are you this evening? Do it. Because even if our creatures die, getting those drains can just wreck them. They need to block in such a way as to not kill my things. Okay. Sure. All right, so none of my stuff is dying and my opponent is at two. How are they going to pull this off? with a cruel celebrant on the battlefield. They can't just kill stuff. They have to somehow exile this or something else, and that's just going to do it. The hero can't keep the troops together. The vampires got them. Not this trash pile again. The master of the slow roll is back, my friends. How's his hand versus red? Not great. Not that good. But I refuse to mulligan. I'm a stubborn person. Let's just drop these Duskborn Sky Marchers and then the opponent will know what's up. <laughs> our opponent's one drop so much better than our one drop, it's a joke. What do you think? Are they the Chain Whirly type? Did we see a Chain Whirler out of them that game? We saw Risk Factor, not Chain Whirler. Hmm. Hmm. All right. You're going to kill something now? Yes, you are. Bang. Okay. What's the play? We play a Vanguard. I mean, we can't really block with anything that we have here, but we might might pay some life to keep it around. Probably not, though. We saw the risk factors. It's a life totals matter kind of game. Yay. This is one of those games where you really want your Sorin. Well, we just need to... What you really want to do is get your Loxodon to, to happen, right? No blocks. We know the opponent will just lightning it. And I'm not lightning my face. Okay, cool. You, you are master. All right. Let's play a Sky Marcher. Play another Vanguard. Send this one. Oh no, probably take it. But if they block, in the hopes that I pay the four life, we'll just let him die. Yep, there we go. One less thing to worry about. Jeez, oh Pete, make that stop. I mean, to be fair, they're just kind of playing all the, the wimpy little cards. It's just, I don't even have a solution for those. My hand's so soft. Sure. Just keep bringing it. No blocks. My, my blocks still suck because nothing has toughness in my deck. I mean, really, though, why does the opponent take these trades? I don't know. I don't know, I'm confused. Let's pay a life to draw a card. I'm sure that will work out fine for me. The last card, it's always like a frenzy or a chain whirler, am I right? We really just, like, I'm trying to hang on to my things because I could draw a sword and that's probably my best chance. Oh, did you just... Are you just going to double burn me? What a freaking champion. <laughs> How lovely. All 
There aren't many people playing tonight. I just keep playing the same old people. Here's uh, Mono Blue. Welcome back. Pretty sure we're up against Esper. If that's what I remember this person playing. But I'm an idiot. I don't always remember things well. Let's get it going. We're going to cloak him in the mist. There you go. So I really want to get this down so I can have retort up. So if the opponent thought erases me, I'll retort, or not retort it, but I'll trickster in response. They'll take one of my retorts, then I'll have the other retort available. Yep. Here we go. <laughs> Pick a card. At least you only have half the choices you usually do. Means this should take you half the time. There we go. Looking at that top card, what is it? What you got? Keeps it. Hmm. Well, there's a there's a pull. So, do we keep up the retort? For three mana, the most likely play is like Oath of Kaya. I think I just need to get more things onto the battlefield. And I would love to use a dive down to stop an Oath of Kaya. So, let's see what they do. Their D sparks aren't very good here. Their hero is medium, because we can evade their tokens. Bell Haunt's annoying, so we need to be ready for that. I guess the worst thing they could do to us is another Thought Erasure, but they take four if all they do is spend their turn Thought Erasing. Yeah, it's the matchup we want. We just have to draw okay, and we should be fine. Hmm. Okay, hero comes down. It's a thing you can do. Do you have a land to go with it? They usually don't play any one drop, so I'm pretty sure they're done for the turn. Spell Pierce, nice. All right, let's get him. And the opponent does not engage, so let's get out another Terramander. We have a Spell Pierce ready to go. We have a Dive Down ready to go. We just need to get him dead with evasive damage as quickly as we can. They know about the retort, and they know we're not holding it up, so they can guess it's Dive Down or Spell Pierce. Hopefully we can catch them by surprise with it being both. That's annoying, but I guess I just make them pay. No, then they can take something or the other. Well, hmm, that's tough, right? What else are they going to do with this mana? They can't Tyrant Scorn with it. They only have one black source. So let's let them pick. I think the retort's the... I mean, the retort catches everything, right? They take the spell pierce. Maybe they do have a play. And they keep on top? Okay. That's a good draw. Although, we're getting to the stage of the game where it's less good. At some point, that trickster, though, you're going to want to trade off with it. You might chump it here with the 1-1. One, one. It's possible if you plan to play multicolor spells every turn for the rest of the game, you'll always have a blocker. So that's a fine plan, but taking the damage... I, I do not understand taking the damage there. But I'll take it. Can't get to Mythic without, uh, without catching some people. Gotta get them. Teferi. Yeah, we're not playing that, are we? That is not happening. We can't beat that card. Our whole deck is built on cheap instants. So, hell no. Still no attacks. All right. Still coming at ya. Opponent wants to double block the trickster, that's fine. We do lo lose the ability to retort, and the opponent knows that. Hmm, maybe a misplay there. I do have another ambush trickster. If they kill one thing, that might not be good enough. They still have to stop my threats. Tyrant Scorn. All right. Let's hit it with the dive down. Opponent is having mana trouble. They're, they're bottlenecked on black. This happens to me when I play this deck pretty often, too. All right. It's three damage in, and we can't hit the lethals. God. All right, your turn. Down to one. Is their whole plan to resolve and enter the God Eternals? It might be. But 
that will do it. Mono blue sneaking it out. Because that's what mono blue's good at. Sneaking. Sneaking. Okay. This hand really needs a lot of things to go right to be okay. We can draw a Curious Obsession or Tempest in and be great. So I'm going to hang on to it. Uh, against white on the draw though, pretty bad, man. Pretty bad. Caw! And now what? Is it the double one drop start? If so, what are we doing here, right? This, this, this isn't a game of magic. All right, no blocks. Well then. So I do need to get that going. I would really love to ambush my opponent with the Merfolk Trickster here though. What's the opponent's play? Probably a Dauntless Bodyguard. No, um, probably a Benelish Marcel or a History of Benalia. Yeah, actually I think I better get this going now. I think it's the only way to be. This isn't flipping next turn. Our opponent's about to make a power play. If we draw a spell pierce, we can stop it. But we're going to be way behind. We're gonna need a lot of these tricksters to have any hope. Hero, I wants to do the thing. Please let me, please let me play my cards as, there we go. Yeah, white is a really tough matchup for blue. Especially if they resolve a venerated Loxodon, which could be their next play. Then I'm really wrecked. It's just one of those things where playing around it is pointless. Let's instead hope the opponent goes for a Conclave Tribunal. But their hand is somehow imperfect. Well, that didn't work out. <laughs> Oopsie. All right. Well, we're gonna be leaning on Trickster and we're gonna need a lot of them. Come on, buddy. We gotta take out their creatures somehow. Okay, <laughs> little Terramander with no spells in the graveyard, that's fun. Let's kick it on over. Okay, they move to attacks, here comes Merfolk Trickster. Freeze him. Freeze that one. And now if they come crashing in, I'll use the dive down to kill a creature if they want to offer a tradesies. No? Smart. That is smart. Oh god, do they have another... Kill me. Just kill me now. Ah! This is so bad. Alrighty. Well, I did say we needed more tricksters, and more tricksters we has. Alright, keep getting them. Give me cards, bring us glory. All right. So they've been playing around the dive down, but you know they have to turn their creature sideways at some point. Should I play the Terramander? I guess we may need to pump it in the near future. Let's see, I plan to play a Trickster, so it's just about which one drop I want to join the team. I guess the Terramander. Eventually we'll draw spells, right? It's been a weird game for that. Or we're just not drawing spells. We're just drawing more knuckleheads, more silly little critters. Keep holding them down. Ain't no one gonna break my stride. Nobody gonna slow me down. No, no. All right, so do I have to take out what do I have to take out? I could take out one of these Loxodons because of their size. Um, the weird thing is it's not like I'm gonna have anything bigger than a 3-3 anytime soon anyway. So like we could do this and then save the one that gets targeted just to keep our opponent's life gain minimal. But then we're still taking eight, it's a lot. And they're gonna do more bad things to me. I think we have to take out the bigger creatures. I think we have to not worry so much about the lifelink. All right, order your blockers. It's always the one on the left. We'll save it. Dive down the awkward removal spell at its finest. 
So this should mean, if I did it right, that the opponent loses their elephant. We don't lose either creature. The hits just keep on coming. All the hits and nothing but the hits. Finalias and Loxodons for days. I, I can't be surprised. All right. This two cards a turn doesn't matter when all your cards are poopy. We could start drawing some Tempest Shins, though. But we, we kind of wore out our Trickster Lottery tickets. These Terramanders could be great. They really could be. The problem is we're not drawing spells. It's kind of embarrassing in its own way. All right, Siren. Let's go. But we have a lot of land. I guess starting next turn we could have adapt them. They can take on these creatures until Benelish Marshall shows up. Lauren Enforcer is heck of annoying. Why? Why is my life like this? Alright. So. Man, I really don't have good blocks here either. All right, let's set up on this guy. Let's put this little dude over here to just absorb some damage and take seven. Seems really bad. Seems deader than dead is what it is. This match was not meant to go well. No, that's not what I targeted. Okay, so when they stack them, it's the one in front, not the one in back. It's always the one on the left until it's not. Thank you, Wizards of the Coast, for your fine game design. How, how awesome was that? You're late. You're so late. I don't think you would have done anything anyway. I'm pretty sure the opponent played the history around the spell pierce like a good player would. Should be dead. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Um, yeah, they just need to attack with all. And, yeah, no need to mess around. You got it. You got it. You just hit the button to... Just hit the button. Just hit the button. God, I hate people sometimes. I try to be nice. I really do. All right. <laughs> Our next uh, deck is Gruel Warrior Aggro. Our opponent is the same freaking Esper Hero player we've played four times. <laughs> I'm starting to question my content choices today. This is not turning out to be fun. This is turning into one of those days that is so repetitive I can't really take it. So I kept this hand because it's good against Thought Erasure. And on the draw, that's really the only thing you can plan for. Ooh, no blue source. Okay. Let's name Warrior. Let's make the opponent deal with this Guardian immediately. And even if they do, we follow it up with another. Make them deal with that. And it is Oath of Kaya. So they were ready for one Guardian. Do we play the other Guardian? Or do we get Thorn Lieutenant rolling? I guess Thorn Lieutenant's ten times better if they find a Teferi. Although if they find a Teferi, I do have a Chain Whirler. Yeah, let's make them stop another Growth Chamber Guardian, because they might be about to play Basilica Bell Haunt. Let's make them have another answer right now. Okay, that's fun. They're at 26, I haven't touched them. Let's do this. It's time to liven up. All right. So, uh, we've seen two Othakayas. Does this mean I can make my Spellbreaker a 4-4 comfortably or not? Because normally I would get in there for three. Because this is a matchup where they just bounce your Spellbreaker with, like, Teferi and stuff like that. But I guess now we're at a stage where I'm worried about... We've already seen two Othakayas, but they might have kept a hand because it has that many. And they, we gotta worry about Basilica Bell Haunt. That's a card that's... That's a card that gets in the way of our plans. We gotta start chunking that life total. They just have too much life.
On the play with double oath, okay. That's so rude to a creature deck. So rude. I suppose I should have held one of the guardians and played the lieutenant. Then I at least have a 1-1 one, one delivering beats. Oh look, a blue source. How oh, nice. They're like, do I thought erase him? Yeah, you, you, that's usually what you do. It's a fairy. I'm known for my excellent timing. Fun. Yeah, I feel so protected right now. Alright. Get off the board, dude. No more Teferi, please. And kick it on over. We got plenty of creatures, but we just have no advantage. Like, everything the opponent does from here on usually, like, takes a card, draws a card. So eventually they'll whittle down our threats. We just don't have enough pressure. We need them to flood. We need, like, the most greatest of luxes. There's the bell haunt I talked about. What's the discard? It feels like it should be shock, but without shock I can't attack with my chain whirler. I think it'll be the thorn lieutenant. I think it's just a little, like, seriously outclassed at this point. Shock yourself. Tyrant scorn? Maybe. All right. Well, if there is a scorn, the opponent might be trying to trap us, but we won't play the shock until after the first strike damage has been dealt. Not when the block occurs. So the opponent's hoping that we play the shock now. I'm not going to. I'm going to pass to first strike damage. All right. And now, shock sees. The opponent might tyrant scorn their own creature. I mean, that's kind of a value play you can make. Just, you know, trying to get to 30 life for the for the embarrassment. Yeah, they're in the tank about it, and the the Belhan dies. Okay. So here's the Spellbreaker. They'll have to scorn that on their turn. It means they waste the mana. They might also just have a D-Spark that they're sitting on. Although that wouldn't hold priority here. I still think it's a Tyrant Scorn. Esper, Esper. Okay, let's go down with the Chain Whirler. This way I land off the top, we've got Hellkites, and they're the most expensive thing in our deck, so we can play almost anything else we draw anyway. Okay. Let's play that. I'm going to put a counter on it. I really want to have the access to this ability because it lets the Goblin Chain Whirler attack into the Bell Haunt. And we'll make the opponent figure out how to kill this Hellkite. If they do something like Teferi, Hero of Dominaria, tuck your Hellkite, I've got the other Hellkite to go over the top and kill the Teferi. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Hmm. Well, that's fun. Not what we need right this minute. Wrong matchup, too. Our opponent didn't get their hero of Precinct 1 draw. They got their control the board to fairy hero of Dominaria draw. But who knows? This can also blow up a creature. You can just kill the bell haunt, get it out of the way. Still have three freaking cards in hand. Okay. We're doing something. Why would you play that first? You might have found a way to deal with the Hellkite. Hmm. Funky. So we get to kill this. Um, and probably play this Phoenix. The opponent making a 1-1 next turn isn't the worst. I do want to get this thing dead. What if I just try attacking? If the opponent blocks, I can use status. Kill the Bell Haunt. Do I care that much about the Bell Haunt? I feel like I should save it. Yeah. I'm just gonna save it, play the Phoenix this turn. My mind needs a rest. Mine too. Alright, our cards are starting to get powerful. We're starting to do things.
This is also a combo that can work well with a Hellkite with a counter on it. All right, Teferi, who's getting tucked? Nobody. There's a card coming off the top instead. May they all be land. Ooh, okay. Well, I guess I can just make sure the opponent doesn't attack this turn. You get nothing. I guess you get a 1-1. One, one. But your Teferi's going down. Unfortunately, I'm going to be at 12. This freaking Oath of Kaya has done a number on me. I guess the opponent could still have a D-Spark. One more D-Spark? What do you think? Is that what they have? I still think I need a counter on this to really help take over the game. So, Teferi, go away. Not a D-Spark. Put a counter on this, buddy. Let's get going here. Still looks like a baby dragon compared to some of the animations. Like, I'm never impressed by the Hellkite animation. Remember Glorybringer? That had an animation. You're not Glorybringer. You rarely even bring me glory. That's why you'll never be a glory bringer. All right, a lot of thinking to be done. And it's a time raveler. Oh my god. This nonsense just doesn't stop. It's so obnoxious. Please bounce the chain whirler. Okay, Oath of Kaya bounced. You're going to play it. To kill something. Another hero. You're making a nice little army. I'll give you that. Gonna have to mop it up with the Hellkite, I think. Okay, shock yourself. <laughs> Look at the life total. It's so stupid. Let's see. This says... Alright, you got my Chain Whirler. You wanna attack? Because we're actually going to have to be defensive here. We have to keep working on our opponent's life total, but we also have to be defensive. So what does this do? Deals two damage uh, among one or two targets. Okay. So, can take out a token, take out a Time Raveler. And say go. There. Let's whittle them down a little bit. Now, if they attack with all this, we can go block, block. I guess I can send the Phoenix. Although if the, if the opponent wants to kill something with a removal spell, they'll want to kill a blocker anyway. But they'd, then they'd want to get the egg. This one does five though. I guess I want to do as much damage as possible if I'm going to chunk them. Mm -hmm. We got a long way to go. And God knows this deck can top deck. Wait. Why? All right, so this video didn't quite turn out the way I hoped with us ranking up. Instead, we worked hard for an hour to stay at diamond plus one. <laughs> That's the way it goes sometimes. We'll pick it up with the uh, aggro warrior status statue chain whirler deck on the next time out. Uh, also, I'll do a regular deck tech. They're not all going to be videos like this. You'll get a few regular deck decks, so. Thank you for watching this video, and as always, I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.